Okay, so I can um, I can make a copy of this, right, and essentially paste this right here. Okay, very well. Reposition it so that everything is still visible. I just clean this up. Okay, so. Um, when somebody says, um, when somebody says, um, let's create uh, like stack uh, st equals new uh, stack, right? So we could do something like this and use the default uh, uh, constructor for the stack class. What happens is that in memory, 100 doubles is allocated. This is obviously is a stack of doubles. It would only, um, it would be perhaps m making sense to name it uh, uh, stack doubles, right, or something like that. But that's just demo, so we don't have to bother with this type of details, right? So when we say new stack, what happens is that the stack is constructed, right? The stack is constructed. Let me just basically represent it as an object in memory. And it has two data members, the storage uh, and the top, right? And the top. So we'll just say this is storage and this is something named top, okay? So top is an integer. Integer is primitive data type. Therefore, top is uh, stored directly in this box. Let me see. Initially, top is initialized to zero, right? So top will contain uh, zero right here, right? So this is the initial value of the top. At the same time, storage is an array. And in Java, arrays are objects. And what the constructor of stack does, it says new double and creates an array of 100 numbers. So therefore, this uh, storage is simply only a reference to another object which seems to be an array of 100 doubles, right? So this is basically the actual allocation of storage is an, is an array of 100 doubles, right? So there will be internally, it will store an array of numbers. Altogether, there will be 100 of them. Okay, so that's the, uh, the situation. When then someone says push uh, a double value, onto the stack, so basically we say, perhaps we can say uh, integer x equals 5, right? And then we say stack uh, push, right? Push x. Okay. Or we can push mm, a, a hard-coded value directly, but, uh, you know, just a demonstration that we can have a variable, and we can say stack, essentially push means stack preserve this value. And again, this is a stack of doubles, so let me actually switch to a double value very quickly instead of, um, instead of this, right? So let's just say double, say double, uh, double x equal 5.0, right? How about that, right? So what happens is that this push right here says um, storage, store, the uh, uh, store uh, the value double gets stored in in inside this array, right? So 5.0 is saved over here, but at the same time we say top plus plus, and that means that this is post increment, right, uh, of the value. So the uh, zero changes to one, right? So zero changes to one. Zero changes to one, and uh, with this respect, this top uh, top uh, essentially constantly points to the top of the stack. So if initially it was zero, now it changes its uh, value to basically to one, which points to the next available slot in this array. So if I then say stack push uh, push. Uh, mm, uh, x times 2, right, preserve a different value. Well, I want to preserve a different value. So obviously that would be 5 times 2 is 10, right? So the value 10 is stored over here, 10.0, right? Another double is stored over here. But every push increments the top, 
and so therefore this time top will change to 2 and of course will be pointing to uh, a different place right to the next slot available and so forth so the hope is that we do not run out of space or we can use something like an array list instead of hard-coded array 100 uh, uh, doubles so that we can uh, grow even beyond the initial uh, 100 values right um, so that's the behavior of this type of storage and the pop uh, uh, if I want to essentially if I want to say something like uh, I want to restore the value of X right and I want to say X equals stack dot pop and uh, get back the value on top of the stack essentially what happens is that uh, if the stack currently is uh, you know the 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 stack top position is 2 notice that it gets decremented before the storage is accessed right so what happens to the value at the top it gets decremented first right here by saying minus minus top this time in front of the variable so it happens before anything else happens inside this method right minus minus top mm. and then we basically return right so this changes top is decremented so it top no longer points to uh, to to this place and the top of course changes its value to one because it gets decremented right so the new value of the top is one and it points over here and then we basically say uh, return storage with this specific index so of course the value of 10 right the value of 10 is going to be returned by this uh, method and X will be populated with the value of 10 right so we're going to extract 10 from the stack so this is how the stack works so basically the top can be incremented and decremented dynamically pointing to different places inside the stack storage uh, and then um, uh, and then um, you know you can both push and pop you can also clear which basically doesn't change any value stored in this temporary storage rather it simply uh, simply uh, sets the top to zero right and you can say you know whether it's full whether it's empty by again comparing the top with the with the length of this array or with zero and so forth right uh, but again the important thing is that all of these methods and the number of methods that I have in this class name stack does not impact has no impact on the actual size of memory being needed used and allocated with respect to the existence of the stack object or this uh, internal array of 100 doubles uh, it has no impact on it right uh, because the array of 100 doubles determine only how much space is needed to to store 100 doubles whereas the stack is the stack size is determined how much space is needed to store a reference to an array object and how much space is needed to store this uh, uh, integer uh, that represents the, uh, the 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 top of the stack, right? So this can be 64 bit, and this can be 32 bit, and uh, altogether, uh, that's the number of bytes needed to actually actually allocate the space of the stack object. So this is important. So the number of methods, and I can invent new methods to use in the stack class. For example, uh, you see how pop immediately uh, sort of like uh, removes uh, the element from from the storage right but what if I wanted to access the value at the top without removing it right so I could do something like um, uh, public right uh, public uh, uh, public uh, double uh, double and uh, then say top to give me access to the top uh, and uh, that method would simply uh, return, right? We'll say uh, return, uh, return storage, right? Return storage, uh, storage uh, top wherever I am right now, right? And just return the value without, uh, and I, I think 
proper calculation suggests that I should be saying top minus one because top is always pointing to the next available slot, but but the 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 value prior you know allocate uh, stored on the stack prior to that should be at the location top minus one, right? So I could pr provide another method, but. Uh, adding this new method, and unfortunately I'm naming it the same way that the, 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 this integer is named, so we have this name collision, but you get the idea. Most likely this would be uh, changed here to like uh, top position or something, whereas top would be uh, the new method name. Uh, and with that respect, uh, 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 the addition of this top method does not change the, the actual size of objects at runtime. That's, again, this is important. The number of methods have no impact on the actual size of, of an object at runtime. Of course, somewhere we have a longer place where all the executable code stored, right? But remember, all executable, executable code uh, is, is also, of course, stored somewhere in memory, but it's separate. It's, it's, uh, all this compiled code is stored somewhere uh, separate from the actual uh, memory uh, needed to allocate and store these objects. Uh, class constructors, of course, exist specifically so that we can populate uh, and initialize the data members of our classes to begin with, so that we don't leave our objects. Uh, like, you know, one possibility would be to simply uh, allocate, uh, you know, essentially allocate the uh, 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 allocate the uh, uh, space needed to, oops, uh, that would be too much, right? Uh, uh, right so I, I'm not very successful with this, but uh, essentially we want to, uh, like I said, we want to allocate space needed by this uh, uh, object, but not initialize any of its value. Uh, any of its values. So basically leave uh, the storage uh, reference and the top uh, with some unknown uh, values. So that would be essentially bad state. Uh, and we would like to avoid it uh, because we want to place our objects in memory and immediately uh, initialize them with something meaningful. And so that's very natural. In fact, there is a good design rule um, in programming do not create variables until you have something good to initialize them with. And that also relates to object. For instance, don't create the stack until you know what size of the stack you need. Because the second constructor, uh, you know, in this demo, basically takes, asks the user how big you want the storage, right? So, so the default is 100, but you can use a different constructor and specify that I want to have it uh, set to a different value. And so that, that way there will be different, different, uh, uh, different uh, array of doubles created a different size, right? Uh, but that's uh, the need for constructors, I think, is, uh, is absolutely obvious, right? So invocation, uh, calling the constructor, is basically any time we say new, that's when the constructor is invoked. So new does two things, allocates space, number one, number two, invokes the appropriate constructor. Even if you create a class without a constructor, the default constructor is still supplied. And in Java, you know that all integers, uh, doubles, and so forth, are initialized to zeros, by that default constructor, and then uh, all uh, object references are initialized with null references, which basically are references that contain uh, in their addresses just basically all zeros. Uh, that would be obviously an invalid memory address, but that's done on purpose to signify that this object reference does not point to anything real. All right, so we already discussed this issue of static uh, data members that they're actually stored outside of, uh, uh, of, the, of, of the class. For instance, in situation with stack, uh, this 100 is currently hard-coded, right? So this, is a, this 100 is a hard-coded value right here. But I could say, uh, you know, public, ooh, again, let me just change the, the color here whatever, right? So I could say uh, public 
uh, public static uh, static um, uh, default uh, default size something like that default size of the stack right and say default size equals 100 right but uh, this uh, may be public uh, int I guess right int default size uh, equals 100 right so I could basically uh, think about another part of the stack which is relying on the static integer but remember that static integer would be elsewhere it will not be part of the stack it will not be part of this this is just basically a, a static uh, object which is allocated elsewhere and uh, and it's uh, and it's allocated s s uh, somewhere uh, oops again I don't know why why this happens but I'll uh, try my best to uh, to show you that this uh, piece is uh, separate from the rest of the data that we use, right? So this is this is where the the, the static uh, static uh, default size is allocated. But then, if another stack object, let me just uh, outline its boundaries one more time, right? So if we have the stack object that was created, right? Uh, that we created as new, right? But then if we decided to create another one of these, control C, control V, like duplicate and create another stack uh, object, which will of course have to uh, allocate its own, uh, you know, the, the, its own storage uh, somewhere uh, similar to, to this one, right? Uh, but they both will share the same static data, right? So the static data is shared between uh, instances of objects. If, in case, if we create another stack, uh, that's not a problem. Just say new stack, give it a name, uh, remem remember uh, the reference that you're using, but the static data is shared, right? So that's just something that uh, we just have to be aware. If that's what we want, we should be doing it, but you should not casually introduce static data members. They're absolutely unneeded, and uh, mm, your focus of attention is should be entirely on data such as you know storage and, and top of the stack, which are plain vanilla uh, uh, non-static data members, right? So they're we say they're data members or uh, object attributes. They belong and they exist in every object that we create.